The most amazing bowls of fur I've ever had always have the most brilliant, beautiful, crystal clear, beefy, fragrant, just amazing broth. It's all about the broth. <laughs> uh, so making that broth at home and getting it really super, super, super charged with a whole lot of flavor does take a little bit of effort. It's not difficult, a little bit of effort, a little bit of time, uh, but we're gonna go through it step by step and you guys are gonna have the most amazing bowl of fur at the end. All right, let's get on to the beef first of all. So you wanna head to your supermarket or your butcher and it'll depend on where you are and what you can get a hold of. But basically, we want some beef bones. Uh, now, I like to go with some bones with a bit of meat on them. So I'm using some short ribs here and I'm also using some oxtail. Now, oxtail is the important one here because the oxtail also has some really good like gelatinous stuff inside those bony bits. Uh, so if you can't get oxtail, try and get beef knuckle. It's kind of the knuckly joint parts of the beef uh, bones that have the gelatin. So you want to mix bones, gelatin, meat, and you should be good to go. All right, so I'm gonna get all of that into my pot. The biggest pot you've got at home would be great. I'm gonna do about five liters of water here. So mine's about a six liter stock pot. And now in order to get that really beautiful crystal clear color, what we need to do is kind of blanch these bones first and get rid of a whole lot of gunk that's gonna come out of them first up. So pour the water in just so that they're covered and then bring this up to a boil and just cook it for like two or three minutes or until you see a whole bunch of gross stuff on the top. <laughs> You'll know, trust me. All right, while that's happening, we're gonna char some vegetables. So yes, even the vegetables get the special treatment for this one. Now, I really wanna char the outside of these vegetables. So I'm gonna use an open gas flame here. If you've got a gas stove top, that's great. If you've got a gas barbecue, you could do that outside. Otherwise, just roast these in the oven until they're really nice and black. Now first up, I want an onion, whole onion, pop it on the flame, and then a whole piece of ginger as well. And what we're looking for here is kind of really burning the outside of these, and then the inside will be nice and sweet and soft. Ooh, that is noisy. <laughs> Now just keep rotating both of these. Kind of turn the heat down to about medium. I don't want to set the fire alarm off, uh, but I do want, as I said, to get a really nice char on the outside here. It's gonna take like 10, 15 minutes, so be a little patient. Okay, so I really did mean burn the outside of those vegetables. You can see how charry, charry they are. So just take the onion off first. And then what you want to do is actually take off most of that burnt stuff. So just kind of, Get your knife in here and just peel that off. And then give that a little bit of a rinse as well. All right, now just slice the onion up. Now same thing for the ginger. So just take off that burnt skin. You can tell that ginger is really nice and soft inside. So this is gonna take away kind of that harsh onion or harsh heat from the ginger so that our broth ends up being infused with a really sweet onion flavor and a sweet ginger flavor. There is method to the madness, don't worry. Okay, just wash that ginger off as well. And then just give that a slice. And then what I like to do here to get even more flavor out of my ginger is just to kind of break it down with a pestle or a rolling pin. All right, so I did warn you about the horror show that was gonna be at uh, the top of that liquid there. So just what we want to, and see, this is what we don't want in our broth, uh, and we're getting rid of it. So let's take out those pieces of beef. Let's get them into some water or just rinse them under a tap. And then let's clean up that pot and start all over again. So clean beef bones, go back in the pot. And now for all the beautiful aromatics that makes a fur broth so special. Uh, if you have a look at the spices here, what I've got is some star anise, a cinnamon stick, and some whole cloves. So they go in. And then I've always got spring onions kicking around the bottom of my fridge. They just always seem to appear there. Um, so it doesn't matter if they're a little bit over the hill, don't worry about that. Uh, pop those in. And now our softened onion and ginger. And now some fresh water. 
Now bring this up to a gentle simmer and then let it cook for about two hours. And the secret here, my friends, is keep it gentle, keep it nice. Any kind of hard boiling here is going to make our stock really cloudy and I want a really nice, beautiful colour, crystal clear. So just let it do its thing nicely. Okay, so this is smelling truly amazing, my friends. Oh, I just, you know, it's incredible how much of the fragrance of the spices and the aromatics you get. I mean, you know, the smell of a beautiful fur broth is truly a joy. Uh, now, I did sort of scoop off, used a ladle and scooped off some of that scummy stuff that rose up to the top just throughout the two hours of cooking. So this is what we're left with and let's keep going because I really need to eat some fur. <laughs> now I can tell you that. Now I just like to get some of these big bits and pieces out of the way first because I do want to strain this but it makes less of a mess if you kind of get these bits out first. Now I am going to keep that bowl of chunky stuff because I'm going to use some of that beef a little later on. But in the meantime let's take a look at our broth. Strain that out. Just look at that beautiful golden colour. Oh, perfection. And so now we're in the final stages of making our perfect bowl of fur. Now I want to get this beautiful broth back into a clean pot and from now on it's all about the setup. So the important part of our broth still to come and that is the seasoning. So what I want to do is just try this and see where we're at. Mm. You know, that star anise fragrance is so beautiful and then you've got like the background beefiness and then all those other little aromatics in there. Mm. Oh, so good. Now, I do want to season with some fish sauce. And look, I find that you really need to aggressively season the broth itself because we're going to be adding noodles which are unseasoned, we're going to be adding more beef which is unseasoned. So you really want this broth to be the star of the show here. I want a little bit of sugar as well and then a fairly decent amount of salt here. Okay, let's get that heating up. Mm, we're getting there. Just a little bit more salt for my liking. And it just has that beautiful fur magic, which, I mean, not like fur as in furry animals, but you know what I mean. <laughs> the fur is amazing. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> all right, so now let's get our meaty bits and pieces all ready. And because I use beef short rib, it means I've got a good opportunity here to use up some of this lovely, slow braised beef. Now you won't always get good chunks of meat here, like so say for example if you're using mainly knuckle bones or marrow bones, uh, you won't get that. But if you've used some short rib, you will. And I am all about the fat and gristle, I have to say. It's not everyone's cup of tea, but it certainly is mine. And you can see because we've simmered that broth so slowly and gently, uh, we've still got like a nice pink tinge to the meat here and it's not bone dry is good. Now don't worry if you don't have any meat that you can salvage from your bones because we're also going to use some extra beef on top. So this is just a piece of round steak that I've had uh, in the freezer for about 15 minutes. Putting it in the freezer means that we can slice it really thin far easier than if it was just at room temperature. Now you could use eye fillet here as well. Um, I find the main thing you're going for uh, for this cut of beef is you don't want too much uh, fat or connective tissue. And I hardly ever say that because I am such a fat girl when it comes to beef. But uh, if you've got big hunks of fat running through this piece of beef, the hot soup won't be enough to kind of dissolve it and make it really yummy. So just go for one that, that is all beef and you want some really thin slices here. So if you pick that up, it should look like a stained glass window. You should be able to see the light. See the light. <laughs> you should be able to see the light through the beef. Mm. 
All right, so we are finally at the assembly stage, which means we are nearly there, my friends. We can nearly indulge in our beautiful, perfect bowl of fur. Uh, now, what I want you to do here is pretend that you're like Gordon Ramsay and get all really pedantic about the setup, because the setup is everything here. Uh, setup and timing. All right, so what I've got here are my noodles. I've had them soaking. These are some rice stick noodles, and I've soaked them in just some room temperature water uh, because I want them to soften up and for some of that starchiness to kind of escape out of the noodles. That way we're gonna have a really clean, bouncy, snappy noodle in our bowl and not kind of like a soggy noodle. All right, and then we've got everything else here, our beef. Uh, I've got together a little seasoning plate here with some fish sauce and chili and lime and some Thai basil, bean shoots, spring onion, our sliced beef, we're ready to go. So grab yourself a handful. I like to do this bowl by bowl, just because I get the right amount of noodle and everything. So noodles go into my rapidly boiling water here. And you want to be quick about this. You want to keep the noodles moving. And literally, that was like, I don't know, 10 seconds. Pull them out, straight into your bowl. Bean shoots, grab a bunch of those into the water. Again, a few seconds only. Pull them out. I just want a little bit of thinly sliced onion here. And now you want a nice little bundle of some of this braised beef. For me, I like to go for all the little fatty bits, but that's just me. And some of those strips, wafer thin strips of steak. Throw some spring onion on top and your broth should be bubbling away. I want lots of steam here. It should be like, it should be like facial time in your kitchen. <laughs> pour that on top, pour that over the beef and you can see the beef changes color straight away. So it's cooking through there. And that is it my friends. One legit bowl of Vietnamese pho right there. And look, if you, so when I am eating pho in Australia, uh, a lot of the time the restaurants will have hoisin sauce and sriracha sauce to add into this. That's great and I grew up kind of eating pho that way. But when I went to the north of Vietnam, uh, in Hanoi, they would eat their pho completely unadorned, just like this with a little bit of fish sauce, some lime and the herbs, which I think if you're gonna go to the trouble of you know making your pho soup from scratch, why not? really be able to taste it. Um, so I'm gonna leave mine like this, but feel free to add hoisin and sriracha if you like. Now I'm gonna add in a couple of chilies, Thai basil, a little squeeze of lime, a little extra fish sauce because, I don't know, here in Asia you always add a little bit of extra fish sauce, but well, we do in Thailand anyway. <laughs> and then mix. And now after waiting half a day, <laughs> let's make sure that it's all worthwhile, huh? Mm. You know, it looks like such a simple dish, but as we know, because we've just walked through the whole process, not so simple does take some time, but wow, is that worth it. Mm. And that soup broth, pure beefiness, saltiness, herbaceousness, all the things, all the nesses. <laughs> mm. It's really one of those beautiful pleasures in life, a good bowl of fur. I hope you guys love this one as much as I do. Mm. Yum. Mm. So good. Some people take great joy in making bread dough at home or pizza dough. For me, this steamed bun dough is one of those truly joyous things to make at home really good and easy. 
So we're gonna start off with some flour. I am using what's called cake flour. It's not as bleached white as your, what we would call like Hong Kong flour or bao flour. You can find that in an Asian grocery store and feel free to use that one if you, if you want to, but cake flour is very easy to find in a mainstream supermarket. So I've got that one. It means though that your buns might not be as bright white as a restaurant style one, but they'll have a bit more flavor. And some sugar, some baking powder, and some instant yeast. So just be careful when you're buying yeast that you're buying the instant version. This version doesn't need to be bloomed in hot water. It can be thrown straight into the mix here. It's also called fast action yeast as well. So that's the one you're looking for. Just give this a mix. And make a well in the center. Now pour in some water. Some vegetable oil and then Start mixing that from the center, slowly working in that flour. And then once your dough doesn't seem to be heating your wooden spoon anymore, get in there with your hands. Now I wanna take this and pop it onto my workbench, a little bit of flour on here to stop the sticking. And then here's where you want to just relax into this kneading process. You want to give this a good 10 minutes so that the dough becomes really beautifully smooth. Okay, so that dough has come together beautifully and that's what I love about this dough. It has a really lovely soft pliable texture which makes it a real joy to work with. So I'm going to put that into a bowl. I just cover that with a lid and let it rest for 20 minutes. So in the meantime, let's do our filling. I just need a little bit of oil in my pan here and some garlic and some onion. Now to help those onions break down and become nice and sweet, I'm going to add a little bit of salt that'll help to draw out some of the moisture. Now those onions have had a couple of minutes, they're beautifully soft. Now I'm going to add in some Chinese barbecue pork. So you can buy this from like a Chinese restaurant, Chinese barbecue restaurant. I actually am using my homemade version and there's a video on how to make this on my website if you would like to give it a try. Now I'm going to add that in and some char seal sauce. So char seal sauce is Chinese barbecue sauce. You can buy it in the Asian aisle of most supermarkets. And now some seasoning, some soy sauce and some sugar. Okay, now I'm gonna add some water. And I wanna let this pork simmer in that beautiful sweet sauce for about three or four minutes just to let those flavors intensify. Oh, so this pork is smelling so amazing. I'm always so tempted to start digging in right now before I make the buns, but I will refrain from doing that and add in a little bit of corn flour mixed with some water. What we want to do here is create almost like a pork jelly that will sit inside of our buns. Now you can see just how thick that's become almost instantly. Now I have to get this out to cool before I make my buns, so just add onto a tray. And then I'm gonna pop this in the freezer and by the time my dough is ready to roll out, this should be nice and cool. Time to have a look at our dough. Now I wanna get a little bit of flour out onto my surface here. Just take my dough. roll it out. We're going to do a couple of rolls and folds here. Fold that dough over and roll again. Fold it over. One more roll out here. Now roll that dough up to form a cylinder.
Now I want to cut this into 16 even pieces. Just place those pieces out. And you can see we've got a lovely spiral shape there with our dough. That's going to give us a little bit more air and some fluff. Now I'm going to cover these up while I roll them out so they don't dry out. Take one of your dough pieces, sprinkle with a little bit of flour, and in the first instance roll out into a circle. And then just like you would with a dumpling wrapper, I want you to take your rolling pin and just thin out the edges of that circle, leaving the center with a little bit more mass than the outside. This way we're going to get a more even spread of our dough around that filling. My pork is nice and cool now. And now here comes the fun part, folding and wrapping our little buns. So follow my lead, take a piece of your wrapper. Now put a generous helping of pork in the middle there. I don't like to be too stingy with my sticky pork. Okay, now this goes sort of like a soup dumpling fold, but it's a lot bigger, so it's easier. So take your right hand and use your left index finger to push a little pleat into your right hand. And then push again into your right hand. And you're basically using both hands to kind of wrap and pleat around the top of the filling. And then you'll get to the point where everything wants to close up. Your thumb should still be in the middle there. And start twisting and then squeeze. And there you go. Beautiful little steam bun shape. Now just tuck in those beautiful little buns with a slightly damp tea towel to keep the air out and then let these guys rest for half an hour. Okay, so now we are ready to steam our little guys. Let's get them out into a bamboo steamer just with some baking paper on the bottom so we don't get any sticking to the bottom. Now I've got some boiling water here and these just need about 12 minutes until they're beautifully fluffy. Let's have a look at our buns. Oh, so good. There you go. Moment of truth though is opening these guys up and having a look. Oh, wow, look at how light and fluffy that bun is. Just the way it should be. I just can't wait. Mm, that combination of that super fluffy bun and then that really savory sweet salty pork one of life's true pleasures mm. so you guys know by now dumplings are literally like my favorite food group uh, these dumplings are really classic really beautiful elegant chinese flavors with a big not so elegant, big punchy kind of chili oil bath at the end and it all works together beautifully. Uh, all right, let's get started on the filling part first of all. Now for me, this dumpling really depends on two things. One is the beautiful pure flavor of the prawns and the other thing is the kind of crunchy element we're going to add and that is with the water chestnuts. So you can find water chestnuts in a can, they're perfectly fine to use canned. I'm lucky here in Thailand, I can find them fresh. Now you just want to fine dice on these. And now we want some really nice, beautiful herbs here. So I'm going to use some coriander and some spring onion. Now for me, texture and chopping here is really important. So if your spring onion is really quite large, you're gonna wanna thin it out through the stem here. Mine's not too bad, but I know you can get some uber big ones that are almost like leeks. Um, make sure you get a really nice fine chop.
And now some really simple aromatics here. I just want some ginger. And some garlic. And now come the prawns. Now you don't need a big cleaver here like I have. It is more fun with a cleaver, but um, a regular knife is just fine. Just make sure you're chopping into nice fine pieces. So you could totally do this in a food processor. What I find though is that when you hand chop your prawns, and I know it's a little bit of extra uh, work, but it's really worth it because you get just the right amount of pop and bounce and texture and you get some nice little chunks of prawn in there as well. But who am I to judge, guys? If you want to do the food processor way, totally go ahead and do it. Now the key to getting a really fine chop here is to kind of go ahead and do some chopping and then fold the prawn meat over and then go back in the opposite direction. Okay, so this is the kind of texture that you're looking for. And pop that into your bowl. Now to bind all of this together, I'm going to add an egg white and the egg white only here because I don't want to add any extra flavouring with the yolk. I want to keep this as cleanly prawny and a little bit herby as possible. I'm sure prawny is a word. Maybe. <laughs> now a good pinch of salt here. And then just a little dash of white pepper. White pepper because it has a more milder kind of flavour than a very harsh in your face black pepper. And now just give everything a mix. Now you want to give this a really good kind of beating almost and you'll notice that everything starts to become a bit stickier as you're going and that means that the egg white is binding everything together and firming up all the proteins in there and we're going to get a nice bouncy dumpling filling. So with the wrapping, I'm going to keep it really simple. See, I don't ask too much. A lot of chopping, but simple wrapping. There you go. Uh, okay, so grab yourself a wrapper. I'm using some gyoza wrappers today. And you just want some filling in the middle. And now here is one super important tip for when you're using store-bought wrappers. They're often quite dry and they need way more water than you think to get everything to stick together. So get a lot of water on that edge there. And now I like to just do two pleats on one side at the top here, push that together and then use your fingers to kind of seal that edge. So we've got a couple of pleats on one side and then smooth on the other side. And to be honest, this is going to all wrinkle up once we get it into uh, the water anyway. So, you know, you don't have to be too pedantic here. Just waiting for my water to come up to a boil so I can cook my dumplings. So in the meantime, let's make our dipping sauce. Very simple, I just need some soy sauce. And then for me, what sets apart a really good dumpling dipping sauce is dumpling dipping sauce. Oh, it's a mouthful. Um, what sets it apart from a good and a bad one to me is the addition of vinegar. So if you can get a hold of this Chinese black vinegar, that is going to give you the most beautiful, it's almost like a red wine vinegar sort of flavour. So if you can't get the black vinegar, feel free to add a little bit of red wine vinegar instead. And I just want a good, about equal amount soy sauce and vinegar for my liking. And then for me, it's got to be red oil dipping sauce. Red oil meaning 
chili oil and so many of you guys have made my Szechuan chili oil I know you all love it uh, if you haven't given it a try check out my video on YouTube on how to make it this is what it looks like it has loads of different uh, spices in there and you can use a store-bought chili oil of course so make sure you're getting a mixture of chili flakes and the chili oil in there and then to kind of round out the flavors, you really want a little dash of sugar here. You won't notice the sweetness, but it will give the dipping sauce a really beautiful, balanced kind of flavor. And then a little smattering of grated garlic for some extra kick at the end. Now my water's ready to go. It's simmering, but you don't want it really rapidly boiling too much. Uh, because you can run the risk of your dumplings breaking apart. Um, so I just want a nice gentle bath for my dumplings here. And you want to cook these for about five or six minutes or until the dumpling wrapper becomes nice and frilly and you can just see a little bit of that pink prawn kind of popping through uh, the wrapper. All right, now these are looking ready to go, which is good news because that means I get to try them soon. All right, just give them a drain, pop them into a bowl. I like to go kind of elegant, a little bit fancy schmancy with these ones. So I just put a little serving of dumplings in here. Some of that dipping sauce drizzled on top. Kind of want to make sure you're going to get a really good mouthful of that dipping sauce, so be generous. Just a little smattering of spring onion. And there you go. I mean, bowls of dumplings don't get much better than that. Oh, look at how pretty that is. Let's just make sure that I've done a good job for you guys. Mm. If you have a look at that filling in there, it's just beautifully simple. With the prawn, just a flex of those herbs. But the texture that you get, so you get that crunch from the water chestnut and those little hits of flavor from the spring onion, from the coriander and the garlic and ginger. And then you get the vinegar and the chili oil and the soy sauce and it really is quite the symphony. Beautiful. Mm. I mean, we make a lot of dumplings. This really simple version, mm. can't be beat, yum. Mmm, sweet, sticky Chinese barbecue pork and the homemade version, oh, so much better. First up, let's talk about the pork. So I'm using pork neck. Basically a sort of pretty large chunk, hefty chunk of, of pork, and it's got quite a lot of fat running through it. And we like that because that's gonna keep our char siu pork nice and juicy. I find that the pork fillet or the tenderloin, which you can use, but that one tends to dry out a little more in the oven. Now what we wanna do is turn this big hunk into three smaller ones. So I'm just gonna slice through so that I get three nice long strips. And now for the all important marinade. So hoisin first. This really is the backbone flavor of this pork. And then we've got some Shaoxing Chinese wine. If you can't find the Chinese wine, you could use dry sherry as well. Or if you wanted to leave alcohol out, just use a little bit of chicken stock. And then we want some honey, basically like the Chinese version of a barbecue marinade. It's sweet and then with that beautiful Chinese five spice flavor. And we've got some brown sugar as well, oyster sauce, and some finely grated garlic. And some Chinese five spice for that beautiful spice aroma. And some soy sauce, good teaspoon of salt as well. And now to get that restaurant style classic red color for our pork without using any nasty additives. So I'm gonna use beetroot powder and you can find that in a lot of health food stores these days. And that's gonna give us a really beautiful natural red color. Okay, so give that a good mix. Now we take a resealable bag and pop our pieces of pork into that. 
so much easier than cleaning up a bowl. And also with that red food coloring, you wanna make sure that you're not staining any of your utensils or cookware. Okay, so that's why I'm also gonna do this on a tray. I'm gonna put a tray underneath the marinade and that bag of pork. Barbecue pork is delicious, but not worth ruining your bench tops over. Okay, so pour that carefully into the bag. Now just close that up nice and tight and then give that bag a good shake and really massage that marinade into the pork. Now you wanna get that into the fridge overnight. A few hours will do at a pinch, but I really want that pork to soak up all of the flavor and all of the color as well. And I can really see that pork soaked up a lot of that flavor. So I'm gonna take that out. We're gonna put that onto a baking tray. Now my baking tray, I've just set up here with some foil underneath and then a rack on top. Now that's gonna save us on the washing up because this sticky marinade tends to burn on the bottom of trays and no one wants to deal with that. And then I'm just gonna pour a little bit of water just to cover the bottom of the tray. I don't want it to come up above that rack, but that water's gonna help to steam the pork, keep it nice and juicy, and also help to keep that marinade from burning on the bottom. And then that just needs 20 minutes in the oven. Now we're left with all these beautiful juices in the bottom of this bag. So I'm just gonna pour that out into a saucepan. And I'm going to use this as a basting sauce, but I can also use it as a side sauce for serving the pork. So we wanna bring this up to a boil. And once you can see that it's boiling, just turn the heat down and let that gently bubble and simmer away until it's nice and thick and glossy. Oh, I tell you, my kitchen is smelling amazing at the moment. Garlic, five spice, oh, all my favorites. Okay, I'm just gonna spoon out about half of that sauce into a bowl. I'm gonna use that to baste our pork. Now we're really starting to get somewhere that pork is starting to look really good. Okay, now I want some of this gorgeous sauce. I'm gonna brush that on the top. Mm, so glossy. And then just turn that pork over and then brush the other side. Now back in the oven for 20 minutes just to cook that pork through. Oh yes, where is that drool emoji when you need one? Ah, oh, this pork looks amazing. Now just let that pork rest for 10 minutes. And now the moment of truth. And now we get to slice and eat my favorite time of the day. Oh, there is nothing like making this homemade version of Chinese barbecue pork. Oh, look at that. So juicy through the center because we've used that particular cut of pork rather than the pork fillet. And then that glossy, sweet, sticky outside is just looking amazing. There are so many recipes you can make with this pork. You can serve it with some steamed rice, some cucumber, and a little bit of that leftover sauce that we made. Or you can use it for noodle soups, stir fries, a whole bunch of things. I'll be posting heaps of awesome things you can do with this Chinese barbecue pork over on my YouTube channel. So head there and don't forget to subscribe.